Okay, hello, uh, my name is Lloyd Hihara, and I'm one of the co-chairs in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, the other co-chair is Dr. Weilin Ku. But today I'm going to be giving you a very short introduction to our mechanical engineering program. Uh, on the first slide, you know, what do mechanical engineers do? And um, I'm going to just read a little bit. Mechanical engineers create and develop mechanical systems for all humankind. They're concerned with the principles of force, energy, and motion. And mechanical engineers use their knowledge of design, manufacture, and operational processes to advance the world around us. That was just a definition provided by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Um, here are some more um, detailed descriptions because mechanical engineering is, is a very wide field and you can work in all different areas. So um, if I can just turn to the, the, the board, um, these are some more specific examples. So in the first, you know, product design, mechanical engineers, you know, do a lot of design in developing new products. <clears throat> they also do machine design, like working on the details in de developing new machines to manufacture products, including like automation and robotics, drones, you know, any kind of moving devices. Um, they also work on systems engineering, modeling like larger systems to predict their behavior, um, fabrication, coordinate fabrication of equipment, products, develop methods um, to improve uh, fabrication techniques. So, you know, when you design a product, um, that's just the first stage. If you want to sell it, you also have to get it into production. It has to be made. Um, there's so many considerations to take you know, into um, consideration. Um, what materials are you going to use? How it's going to be fabricated? You know, is it going to be forged? Is it going to be cast? Um, is it going to be machined? And as a mechanical engineer, if you're in that area, you're going to be able to um, design the process so that you minimize costs, you know, become maximum uh, you know, e efficient um, in order to make it a successful product. Then there's also um, testing and quality. Mechanical engineers have to make sure that the products work. Um, if it's something on an aircraft, you know, you can't just design it and, and implement it. It has to be tested sometimes for like hundreds of hours to make sure there's, you know, very little failure. Um, research and development. MEs also work on researching and developing new products. Um, at the university, we you know, the mechanical engineering faculty work on a lot of research in addition to teaching. And, and in these projects, we normally are looking at, um, you know, the very initial stages of new ideas, you know, trying to figure out, you know, if this works, you know, how can we solve, um, a, you know, a larger problem. Uh, and over there is interesting, there's also this um, sales, um, engineering sales. And it's actually a very important area to get into. And sometimes, you know, you may come to the engineering program, you may um, decide that, you know, or figure out that you kind of don't want to just be working on equations and modeling, and you're more of a people type of person. Um, there's also an area called engineering sales, where a lot of companies are selling like sophisticated equipment, you know, to their clients. And a lot of these, uh, you know, equipment are not just off-the-shelf products. It has to be specifically designed, con you know, configured, um, and then modified. So a lot, lot of times, only an engineer, you know, can be the interface with the vendor um, and the client. So there's a lot of opportunity also in engineering sales. Um, on the bottom, manufacturing, process, development, and operations. Um, so if you can just imagine, like for example, here in Hawaii, you know, we have the uh, refinery in Campbell Industrial Park. You know, in order to refine the oil into gasoline um, or at, at the power plant, in order to keep the power plant running, you know, mechanical engineers play an integral role in making sure that all of the functions are working. And when there's a problem, you know, you have to troubleshoot and, and try to solve that problem. So there's so many areas to get into 
And down here on the very bottom, it has other uh, medical school, law school, business school, and management. So um, you find that you know, when you come to school, you may get a bachelor's degree in one area, but if you want to specialize in another area, you, know, you can go on to graduate school. So some MEs actually, after they get the ME degree, they may go you know, into uh, medicine, or some of them may go into law, um, you know, or other areas. So um, you know, the main thing, you know, get a solid education, but as you come into the program, you can decide you know, what is going to be best for you and, and your future. Um, this is just a chart of our ME enrollment over the years. So we really grew a lot in the last like maybe 10 years. And then now there's a little decline, you know, but in response to the increasing enrollment, um, our ME faculty, you know, numbers, you know, have increased. So for us, that's a pretty good thing. You know, we're getting more faculty. The classes has, you know, kind of leveled off and maybe like a slight decline. Um, in the ME department, uh, we have faculty in three areas, um, thermal science, mechanics, and materials. So these are all of our faculty in the thermal science area. And if you just look, they have a, you know, come from a um, diverse background of, you know, universities, primarily in the United States, but some also from um, other countries. Uh, so there's right now, like, um, I guess nine faculty in thermal science. Um, the other area is mechanics. Um, we have right now, um, I guess that's seven faculty in mechanics. And then materials, um, where I'm in, you know, there's uh, the three faculty in materials. So all of the faculty, in addition to teach, you know, their courses, um, since we're at a research one university, one of our primary functions is also to conduct research. And um, these are just some of the examples of research projects or areas that our faculty work on, like in thermal science, you know, projects in acoustics, um, alternate energy conversion, um, renewable energy systems, um, biomedical, in, uh, biomedical engineering, computational fluid dynamics. In the mechanics area, we have um, space and ocean science and exploration, like autonomous vehicles. Um, they also work in renewable energies and mechanics, you know, um, nanotechnology, precision machining. And um, those are just some examples. In materials, uh, some of our faculty are actively working on friction steel welding, you know, different joining processes, um, smart materials and intelligent structures, and um, also in corrosion, which, which happened to be my area. So um, all of these areas, you know, it's so diverse that you can like let it Google and, uh, you know, get, get more details. So our ME program um, consists of you know, 40 courses, which is actually the university requirement. And of those 40 courses, 18 of the courses are college requirements, and the remaining 22 are mechanical engineering requirements or with, from our department. So if you look at this, um, in this 40 course requirement, you know, you also have like some history, English, you know, other supporting courses. Um, the College of Engineering requires uh, math, natural science, social science, arts, humanities, literature, English, um, global and multicultural perspective. And in the ME department, there's 22 courses. Um, four, 14 of them are required mechanical engineering courses. Three of them are technical electives in mechanical engineering. So you can choose between you know, a set of, of different courses. Um, we require two electrical engineering courses, one civil engineering course, and one math and one physics course, you know, above and beyond what's required by the college. Um, so as a breakdown for our mechanical engineering curriculum, um, I just put this in different categories like science courses, you know, chemistry and physics. Um, you also have math 
from you know, all of calculus one through four, and there's some additional math courses that you need to take. Um, basic engineering courses, um, you can see here it's CEE, -E, that's civil um, and environmental engineering. Uh, so we share some of the courses in the College of Engineering. There's also um, you know, basic circuit analysis, which is an electrical engineering course, but mechanical engineers also have to take that. Um, in the mechanics area in ME, these are the, the courses, the required courses. In the thermal science area, those are the required courses. And in the materials area, those are the required courses. We also have a design area where you start off with this introduction to engineering design in your sophomore year. Um, and then you take other courses going to the curriculum, but you end up with a capstone design course in your senior year, which is two semesters, you know, ME 41 Project Design 1 and ME 42 Project Design 2. Um, and then um, we'll show you some examples of those projects um, at the end of the presentation. So the College of Engineering also have some new programs in engineering science. Um, it's, it would be a degree called engineering science, but one area is aerospace engineering, and the other area is biomedical engineering. And we hope in the future that maybe you know, those programs may actually um, develop into a department, but right now that's you know, still just, um, you know, uh, it's not that developed yet. Uh, then there's also this bachelor, accelerated bachelor and master's program. Um, it's called um, 4 plus 1. So if you get into that program, you should end up with your master's degree at the end of about five years. So one of the advantages of that program is if you enter that program, um, you may be able to double count a few classes for your bachelor's and your master's degree, so there's, you take a slightly less amount of classes. Uh, this other um, program that we have is this educational partnership agreement with Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. It's a mechanical engineering technical elective. And we've been um, offering this program to the students for several semesters where students um, work, do a lot of their work at the shipyard, uh, but being supervised by um, people at the shipyard in addition to faculty that's teaching the course. And um, they work on actual real problems, but you know, the faculty at UH makes sure that um, you know, fundamental criteria for the course are being met. And when they you know, graduate, um, you know, there's a chance that they'll be able to be employed also at Pearl Harbor. But of course, they still have to apply but it, it has been a very um, popular um, technical elective. Um, what our students do, this is an example of just one of the projects that our students worked on. It's an electric altering vehicle that they designed and fabricated. Um, and they initially uh, worked with the city and county lifeguards um, to develop a quiet, um, easy to maintain and corrosion resistant um, all-terrain vehicle. In these next slides, um, I have some short videos of some of the projects that our um, capstone design students you know, have worked on. And these are just three examples. You, you know, there's so many other like very interesting examples that, um, that they've worked on, but I, I just don't have the time to show you right now. So. Um, this is a project that the students worked um, with the Hawaii Space Flight Laboratory. Um, that was in collaboration with other organizations like the U.S. Navy, U.S. Air Force, Sandia National Laboratory, and the Pacific Missile Range Facility. So let's see if um, we can get this presentation going.
Um, the next short video clip is one of um, the projects that the students worked on, on this mini SAE uh, Formula One racing car. Uh, so um, I'm going to um, just start that. A UH team of engineering students has such a need for speed, they manufactured a racing car. Then they put it to the test at an international competition. Jim Mendoza reports. The car is a cross between a souped-up go-kart and a Formula One racer. It was designed and built by the UH Rainbow Warrior Racing Team. It really looks like and feels like a real race car. So this thing can really get up there and, and it's very quick on its turn. 18 engineering students manufactured the 500-pound speedster that runs on high-octane fuel and can hit 80 miles an hour. I was one of the drivers during the autocross session and for one, the car is really low and it's really light. Last month, UH ran its racer in an annual international collegiate event in Lincoln, Nebraska. The Rainbow Racing Team finished 14th out of 80 universities and colleges that entered a car in the competition. It's UH's best finish ever. Cars were graded on design and cost and how they handled road tests. UH was one of only eight schools to complete all the events. The endurance event is really the big one. Um, we're actually running the car for 22 kilometers for about half an hour. So this is really testing you know, how reliable these cars are as well as their overall performance. This is the fifth straight year UH entered a car. Finishing 14th is pretty good, considering some schools have been at it for 20 years. Just you know, being able to compete with this high caliber of engineering and, you know, experience was really amazing. The UH Engineering Department will hang on to the formula style racer, so next year's team has a blueprint to build on. Jim Mendoza, Hawaii News Now. Um, this last video is um, one of the projects where the students designed like a hydrofoil for a sailboat um, that would allow the sailboat to actually fly above the water. Let me start that. So the purpose of Team Malolo is to give an experience. What we want to do is to introduce into the hydrofoiling market of the laser sailboat um, a new platform for sailors that are learning to hydrofoil or may want to dabble in hydrofoiling. And what we want to do is just to offer a platform for these um, niche or niche type of um, sailors to give them a more stable platform so that the learning curve is shortened. Into an actual project and we kind of already knew a ton of people that were not only just really good friends but they were also really smart students so and we're really interested in like foiling and sailboats and just design work right? Yeah so it was really helpful everybody brought their own set of skills to the table and it completely made the project what it is today. The challenges we had when manufacturing the external frame, to me, was going from having a perfect design, a perfect, everything worked out perfectly in paper, to realizing that you didn't plan for everything and you had to come up with some new solutions or modify your and tweak your design slightly so that you could manufacture it correctly. When we first took the boat out on the water, none of us knew what to expect. We had worked the mathematical models through, we had built everything to the best of our ability, and everything looked like it was going to work great, but we had no idea what the actual outcome would be. when our test pilot nearly immediately planed up to the surface of the water and started flying the boat just as we had designed. For me personally, it was exhilarating to see the boat rise up out of the water on the foils the first time. No amount of sitting in front of your computer and calculating and running simulations can prepare you for that moment when you see your project do what it is supposed to do. I was very excited. For me, it was actually interesting because I didn't know immediately that the boat was off the water. It was not until I started hearing people on the motorboat yelling that I'm like, I, I think I am actually foiling. Because it was just, it just lifted off so nicely and it was just very surreal. 
Thank you to the staff and crew at the Marine Education Training Center, especially Bob. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank 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 you. Team Alamo would like to thank Dr. Song, Dr. Trimble, and Dr. Sorensen, also the College of Engineering and the Marine Educational Training Center for allowing us to work and be part of their project. On behalf of Team Alolo, we would all like to give a very warm and wonderful Shahutstan! Ratch. <laughs> you got it? No, hold it up one more time. Come on, man. <laughs>